money, man. How are each and every one of you doing on this amazing Friday? I'm doing great. My girl's doing great. My family's doing great. I hope each and every one of you are doing great through these crazy and chaotic times. If you could please hit that like button, that subscribe button, and that bell notification button so you get all these videos when they're new. If you could share with somebody on social media, help spread the message, help spread the word, that would be amazing. And there's a PayPal option if you'd like to donate, help support the channel. The link is in the description of all of my videos. So, we're going back to this breaking down each prison. And today, we're going to do the infamous Kingston Penitentiary. Now, I haven't done a lot of time there. <clears throat> because basically, since Millhaven opened, it was like a protective custody joint. And the only reason why you would go there is if you went there for uh TD unit which is the parole violators unit you'd be there for a couple weeks they'd ship you back to your mother institution now the cells in this place are tiny it's a two-tier old jail that looks literally like Shawshank it's a big thunder like tunnel you walk up these stairs and there's all these different ranges around this big like it's hard to explain uh you know anyway it's hard to explain when you walk in, there's these cathedrals walkway up. It's like old school, hardcore penitentiary, hard wall on the water of Lake Ontario. Just a creepy place built in 1835. 1835. That's how old it was. It shut down like 2011 or something like that. I didn't do all my homework, but I did do some homework. Now, Kingston Penitentiary, for me was a kind of a scary experience, not because of violence. It was actually a really easy time. There was lots of weed because I was in the transitional unit, lots of tobacco. You were just chilling. You had a TV. You know, it was an easy time. But it was scary, man. The vibes in that place definitely haunted. You can tell that it was definitely, definitely bad there at one point. I mean, at one point in the mid-1800s, they kept kids there. They sentenced an eight-year-old to three years in Kingston Penitentiary in like the mid-1800s. Now, just think about that. An eight-year-old to three years. So, I remember waking up in the middle of the night. Now, these cells were so small that you had to walk sideways. Like, you couldn't stand up between the bunk and be shoulder to shoulder and walk back and forth really at all you kind of have to like tilt your body a little bit and you have about six feet to pace there's a top bunk and a bottom bunk but realistically you can't really sleep on the bottom bunk if you do you gotta like roll in you can't like sit up or anything you just have to roll out tiny 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 little cells maybe like six feet by four or five feet maybe five feet tiny and i remember waking up in the middle of the night one night and having really bad vibes, cold chills, like as if there was some, you know, some creepy spiritual stuff going on there, some real negative energies. Just be, just think about the pain in that place. Now, there have been three riots in Kingston Penitentiary, but I'm going to focus on one, and that was the 1971 riot. Okay, I'm going to have to use notes a little bit here. You know, don't mind me, but. Basically, in 1971, six guys took over and, you know, took hostage a, a group of something like six officers, okay? They held these officers hostage, took over control of the prison, and basically started demanding better treatment. Now, the original guy, whose name was Knight, that was his last name, this was the... This was the original spokesperson, the person talking to the negotiators, his intent 
was to make things better for the inmates, but non-violently. Let's just talk. We have them hostage. Let's just talk. But he didn't understand that behind his back, there was two other groups of guys forming. And these other two separate groups also wanted control of the riot and had different ways of looking at it. One group wanted to also do it peacefully, but wanted to be in control. And one group wanted to do it by any means necessary, violence, whatever. And negotiation process broke down. The one group realized that a bunch of special needs inmates, AKA protective custody inmates, people for sex charges that had to be hidden away from the general population because this is a maximum security population at the time, were housed on a separate range, 1D. Now, first, during the negotiations, they went in there and they messed with them and they talked crap through the bars and all that stuff. But later, stuff just got more and more and more serious. They burrowed in through the walls. They took these guys out into the big thunder dorm area in the front, held them hostage, tortured, beat them. Two of these guys lost their lives. It was a real crap show. They took six, like I said, they took six guards hostages. That's some gangster crap. You know, you guys are riding out for the cause and they were just tired of being treated, treated like animals, you know. Prisoner's Justice Day stands for a lot of the things that we get now. The reason why we sacrifice on that day is to show thanks and solidarity for the sacrifices that a lot of these guys made over the years to ensure that convicts actually were able to do some comfortable time, have TVs, have their own clothes, have visits, not have to put in a request for a phone call, be treated like human beings. That's what the whole day Prisoner's Justice Day stands for. And that's what the, a lot of these riots happened because they were being treated like animals in a lot of these old school prisons. I'm sure they were being pitted up against each other, assaulted by the staff, treated like real pieces of crap, 100% fed crap, just beaten, assaulted. I guarantee it back in the day, you know, and there was hangings in this place. It was a real nasty place where a ton of people lost their lives over the years. I know that seven or eight different uh, COs lost their lives there over the years. Just imagine how many suicides, how many murders in a prison that's open for like 175 years. 175 years in a maximum security prison. Now, after the 1971 riot, they opened Millhaven. They sped up the process of opening Millhaven Maximum Security, which I guess at the time was a more high-tech jail. Cells were controlled mechanically. And just, just the ability to kind of give them a little bit more civility. Even though, you know, it's maximum security. How much civility are they really giving you? But I, I just think a lot of those real old-school rough joints and penitentiaries were just real caveman treatment you know you like you didn't have a whole lot of say and if you stepped out of line you were beaten put in seg thrown in the hole not fed fed bean cakes just bread and water whatever it is left down there for months and months no no ombudsman nobody cares about how you're treated because you're a convict and just over the years we gain more and more rights and uh a lot of the time these riots just stand for we're still people you know, you can't just, you know, put us against the wall and psh, psh, for years and years, this hardcore punishment and not expect people to rebel. You know, you see how violent the American prison system is. You take away all of these people's hope. There's two million inmates in the States. How many of those people are doing life with no chance of parole? You take away their hope. What have they got to lose? You know, that, that's the difference in the Canadian system, but still... There's still all kinds of atrocities. There's still all kinds of abuse by staff. There's still all kinds of corruption. You know, and it still really just boils down to money and having you caught up in the system. It, it, it's a reality, whether you want to believe it or not. But Kingston Penitentiary was a scary place, you know. Only two people successfully escaped from that place. I think Ty Khan, uh So hold on. The only one in the last 
half century of it being open. He escaped in 1999. This guy was supposedly a snitch. I don't really know his story. I didn't, you know, really check into it from Millhaven. They took him over from Millhaven because he had to be taken over because they'd kill you if you were a snitch, especially back in those times when it was, you know, nothing was acceptable that was below the line. You know, back back in the 80s, the 70s, the early 90s, you'd get killed for nothing. It was a different generation, you know, a lot more respect. You could do your time a lot more comfortably. But if you violated, you were surely almost surely to get killed if you're in those higher security joints. Now, Kingston Penn has been home to some of Canada's most infamous killers like Paul Bernardo, the Colonel Russell Williams, Clifford Olson, and many others. Now, after 1971, I don't know exactly when Kingston Penitentiary kind of started leaning protective custody, but once Millhaven was established, and J unit was established as the general population. Kingston Penitentiary was no longer that. It was protective custody. And if you had gotten attacked or something in Millhaven and you didn't want to get shipped out of province to go to general population, you would have to go there. You have you wouldn't have a choice if you had a family or whatever. You know, so not everybody there was a bad person or a piece of crap, but for the most part at the end that's what it was it was it was a pc joint but back in the day kingston penitentiary infamous scary shawshank redemption like prison and i'm telling you man the night that i stayed well the weeks that i stayed there it was it was very creepy but that one night specific it felt evil to me like straight up i'm talking chills down my spine and and being afraid to turn around and look at the other side of because I'm like curled up this way facing the wall and and being afraid to turn over and see what was behind me just knowing there's nobody there though Ugh, I, I don't know man that place it's good that it's been shut down nobody should ever have to go through that kind of time and I know that maximum security inmates are murderers. And I know that a lot of people expect maximum security inmates to be treated as such, to be treated as monsters, to be given no rights, no phone calls, no TV. But you got to understand that you're just going to create bigger and bigger and bigger monsters. And our system doesn't really cater to just kind of leaving them all locked up forever. It just It's not big enough for that. It relies on some people getting parole. You know, it, it just does. So you can't just create these monsters. And I think that's one of the reasons why they shut down Kingston Penitentiary and moved maximum security to Collins Bay, built a maximum security unit over there. And now Millhaven is the Kingston Pen, is the more PC joint, although not everybody there is PC. And uh, maximum security reception is there. Now TD unit which is the transitional unit or the parole violators unit, which used to be in Kingston Penitentiary, is in Joyceville, as far as I'm concerned. That's where it was the last time I was doing time. And, you know, the TD unit is chill. You're just smoking and chilling and waiting to get shipped. Nobody's paying attention. Nobody's trying to classify you. Nobody, You know, you're just literally just sitting around all day waiting for your ride. And they don't tell you when it's coming. It could be one week, it could be eight weeks. You just got to sit there and wait, smoke your brains out, no longer in Kingston Penitentiary. Now, everybody should be happy this place was closed down. This place is not where anybody in this country that takes pride in being a country that believes in people's human rights and is a more liberal-leaning country, then it's better for us and it's a good look that that place has been shut down. Obviously, I share my stories with you guys, so you guys don't have to go through these things yourselves. If I could snap my finger, nobody goes to prison. Nobody gets in trouble again. That is what I would do, but that's not reality. Life is hard, especially in 2020, all this COVID crap and everything that's just negativity weighing down on us every day. It's probably really hard to stay sober or to at least stay on the right track. You know, I get it. It's been stressful for me too. I appreciate each and every one of you guys for watching my videos and helping me get through these times. 
you know, I vent to you guys. I, I, I get a lot off my chest to you guys and it helps me a lot. I appreciate that. I'm going to do more homework and try to do more of these videos and get better at them of describing pens I haven't done time in. So you guys just get an understanding what our system is like and what you can expect if you get locked up in Canada. Love each and every one of you. The new Matt Clark.